Also, äh, pass auf jetzt. Was ist los? Ähm, das ist Hans-Jörg im Wattsack. Ähm, das ist ein Spezial für die Weine Rot von äh, Österreich. Ja, um, yeah, I'm going to put some music on now um, of the band that played at Emma and My Wedding. Um, Stubai Power, Stubai the band, Florian Stockhammer. Some of you watching this show might have actually been at our wedding listening to this amazing band. Uh, but I'm just going to put it on the background. I just think it'll just give it some vibe. Um, I was going to put some uh, Frank Furs and stuff out. Uh, I thought it might be an overkill. Do you like the hat? Stiegel Goldbroy. That's the Lager of Kings. Got a case coming next week. Driving a bit too late. Anyway, so thank you again. Thank you very much to Freddie Bulmer and Ewan Murray at the Wine Society for, for providing me with this wonderful range of amazing value Austrian red wines. How many of you out there have drunk Austrian red wine before? You should be ashamed of yourselves because they're lovely, lovely wines, which I shall now explain. Okay, this wine, I think, should actually go at the end. I'll explain that in due course. But, so we have this Oberkainer music coming from the Tyrol. But we're talking about the wine regions of Austria, which is at the far eastern end. So my wife did all these amazing things for me last night. I was snoring away. She was colouring in. Um, so this is a map of Austria. Uh, this is Bregans. That's Lake Constance. This is Switzerland. And when we have... Innsbruck, where we fly every summer, not this year, that's why I'm getting fatter and fatter, not up a hill, you see. Um, but just south, Stubaital, where does music come from? Then you've got Salzburg, halfway across, across, which is where Mozart's from, and where this amazing beer is from. And then if you go all the way up there in the corner, the little blue blob, Vienna. Okay, so, we talked about these wines on Tuesday. These are the white wines. Now we're going to talk about these wines. The red wines. Okay, right, cool. Let's start off with this. We started off Tuesday's show with a wine from Familia Mantler. This is called Familia Mantler Zweigelt Classic. And it's, I don't even notice, but there's lots of um, uh, feet all over the, the thing. Um, it's their mantra. It's their thing. It's their label saying that we do everything ourselves. We stand our own feet. Uh, they're sustainable. Um, they're organic. Uh, they're a wonderful family making really honest, delicious wine. Again, the, the wine that they um, uh, that I had on the Tuesday show, which was the Gruner Fernley, was eight ninety five. I think this is eight ninety five or even less, eight seventy five. I don't know. But this is a great variety uh, that was invented by, invented as much as it can be, by a Dr. Zweigelt, and he named it Zweigelt. Nothing like hubris, I suppose. Um, but there are great varieties in Austria which most people may, won't be familiar with. You've got Blau Frankish, which we're going to come on to, capable of greatness. San Laurent. I don't have one here. I couldn't find one. San Laurent's a bit like Pinot Noir. It shares DNA with Pinot Noir. Um, and if you cross Blau Frankish with... with San Laurent, you get Zweigelt, which is what we're starting with, which is kind of like, I don't know, in so many ways, Austria's own variety. Blau Frankisch isn't entirely Austria's own variety because it's called Kek Frankosch in Hungary, also capable of some really fantastic wines. And it's not surprising because they, they butt up to each other, they're right on the border. That's Neuss Idlese, around here is Lake Balaton or Balaton Boglar, and this is Hungary. And this area is the kind of like the Valley of Kings for Blau Frankish, or Kek Frankosch. Okay, so without further ado, let's try this wine. This is um, from Familia Mantler. They're up in the uh, Niederösterreich up here, um, and they're producing great variety wine. So if you want to know what Zweigelt tastes like, ring up the wine society or go online and drink this. It's not complex. It's not trying to be complicated. It's a fantastic, I mean, really fantastic pizza red. It's got a tang to it. It's got a twang and acidity and a ripeness. And it's very unusual to find that kind of level of obvious ripe fruit, like damsons and sloes, but also have to have that acidity tang. And it reminds me of the wines of Northwest Spain, uh, Menthea particularly. Uh, and this particular wine reminds me of those wines. So if you like those wines in the northwest of Spain that have this lovely sweet and sour, sour cherry twang, this is your money because this is cheaper than the kind of wines you get from up there. It 
delicious brainless drinking. This is lift music drinking. Um, if you want to lose a few pounds, I suggest you stop drinking beer like me and start drinking red wine like that. Okay, so moving on, we're into Geierhof. Geierhof, Stockwerk. Stock, uh, Stock means, um, Erster Stock means first floor. Stockwerk, I think, means the floor itself. I could be wrong. Maybe wrong. So this is like, I think ground floor would be the name of this word, uh, this wine. I could be wrong. Please tell me if I am. Uh, this wine's from 2017, so it's next to a year older. Um, and it's from Geierhof, and this is another Zweigeld. And the point I'm trying to make here is that this is what £9 buys you. This is what £13 buys you. It's an entirely different level of focus and fruit. And being that... Not only am I an actual official ambassador for Beaujolais wines in France, I do love to drink them, and it didn't feel like any kind of compromise to promote Beaujolais, which I'm going to be doing over the next year or two, because I love the wines. So unbelievably underrated. So this is where I'm going with this. Austrian Cru Beaujolais. If you like Fleury, you like Morgan, you like Brie, drink Zweigel around the 13 to £15 pound mark. Merest hint of some kind of wood finish. It smells like it's been aged in old school concrete. I don't know if it is or not. It's fragrance, taste of Bing cherry, red cherry, red currants. It's so focused and so fresh, just like Beaujolais is. You can have this with ham, you can have it with pate, you can have it with chicken. Very, very, very versatile. Um, absolutely delicious wine. And um, I shall be buying a case of this from the Wine Society this week. Ooh, so pretty. So pre it smells of violets. And violets is something which, uh, by the way, 40% of the world can't smell genetically, just so you know. So if you're going, what, what's the fuss about violets? Or what's palm of violets all about? It just tastes like sugar. You're one of the nearly half of the world that can't. Um... But violets is a smell, if you can smell it, which only kind of appears in things like expensive Bordeaux and Barolo and things. So that whiff kind of makes this wine, to those people that have access to that lovely smell of violets, makes it smell way more expensive than just like 12 95 I'm not sure about the cat. What do you reckon? No, I'll keep it on. Okay, so next up, Freddie Bulmer's new own label. Freddie's the Austrian wine buyer. The Society's Blau Frankish. Mentioned this from the beginning. This is made at the most amazing producer called Hans Igler, who specialises in Blau Frankish. He makes really top end Leiterberg, which is the Grand Cru wine. We're going to come on to that in a minute. Um, very, very special wines from this particular variety. Um, Blau Frankish is really something. Black cherries, Black Forest Gatto springs to mind, but a deep, deep mulberry fruit. And even at this price point, this is a sub nine pounds. This is a, um, a very, very special wine from a top producer. Oh, by the way, there is a Joseph Eagler as well. Labels aren't dissimilar. I'm imagining they may be family or maybe they don't talk to each other. Joseph Eagler wines are very, very good too. I buy them a lot when I'm in the Tyrol, but I think I'm happy with this. Sorry, mother-in-law, I meant Tyrol, not the Tyrol. Okay, so, im Tyrol. Wow. Glossy, plush. Not not Merlot. Oh, we've got a Sky advert on at the moment. I do apologise about that. It's got an earthiness, a deep sappiness, which is rather pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 enough of that. That's ridiculous. It's gone to a guy called Andy Borg, who doesn't know how to play anything. Okay, so... It has a sappiness and a sweetness. It reminds me of a young, crunchy, but, okay, it's like a, a Somo Champagne, like a Cabernet Franc from the Loire with a suntan. It's like it's gone on holiday. Fabulous wine. Juicy. Oh, well done, Fred. Nothing wrong with that. And who else, what other company on earth would have the balls to have an O-label Blau Frankish? Well done, man. Okay. Poor smaller samples, you know. Okay, if you were watching on Tuesday, shame on you if you weren't. I was talking about Belgit Braunstein. This is from the wonderful 2015 vintage. It's from the Bergenland. Let me show you. This is the extreme east part of Austria. Okay. 
And then around here, Neusiedlerse, on this side are the magic vineyards of Austrian Blaufrankisch. Blaufrankisch from Leiterberg, DAC, are amazing. And they, they go in price for about £15 for somebody who can actually find a vineyard and, and sell it for strumps, up to £40 or £50. I'm not quite sure how, but this wine's biodynamic, maybe one of the best winemakers in Europe. And the Wine Society is selling it for £19. Um, something doesn't add up there. So when I poured it for the first time a few hours ago, I thought, maybe it's not as good as I thought. But I was wrong. Oh. Oh. It's profound. Profound. Um, the nose, this is biodynamic, it's super organic, so and it's using wild yeast, so the, the nose is complex, deep, deep, deep. Smells like a very kind of more structured. There's a hint of Pinot Noir about it. But when we're talking Pinot Noir, we're talking ballsy Pinot Noir. Not kind of soft, fruity raspberry Pinot Noir. We're talking Central Otago, New Zealand Pinot Noir. Or I don't know, Alo's Corton, Corton, sort of like no, no, structured Pinot Noir. But the, the wine's darker in colour. It's amazing. It's ethereal. Um, the, the palate doesn't, it, it's got all this power on the nose, it's all this power in the mouth, but it doesn't hurt in any way. It's suave, it's soft, it kind of just fills the gaps, almost like a gas that gets under the door, kind of intoxicates you. I believe the baguette only has like, an acre of this, like less than half an acre of vineyard in Leiterberg, DAC. And wow, is she making killer wine from it. What can I say? It goes on and on in flavour. Exquisitely oaked. Sorry, yes, that was a burp. Apologies. Twenty five quid, thirty quid. But it's nineteen pounds. Buy this. If you like those kind of wines that I've just mentioned. If you like Barbera from Italy, if you like punchy Pinot Noir, this is really stunning. I know there's people out there watching me who know about wine but just don't drink Austrian wine. This is your chance to make amends, okay? If you're not buying South African wine, because they need your help, and they've got some really good South African wines at the Wine Society, obviously. Last wine. This is a wine made by this stone righteous hippie dude um, who... Um, but I don't think the Grateful Dead is ever off his record player. This is Herr Pitnauer. This is a biodynamic wine again, like this. It's completely super organic. And he's just got his chilled approach to life. He specialises in Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent plus Blau Frankish equals Zweigelt. Remember I mentioned that earlier on. But also he specialises in Pinot Noir as well. And I've drunk his Pinot Noir in restaurants around London. And uh, he makes beautiful, silky, handmade complex interesting characterful wines they're never dark either they're more cheerful um if i'm going to be a bit of a tosser about it it's a bit like it's the barbaresco to the barolo you know it's kind of cheerful and sunny disposition so herr pitt now makes a wine called pity which i think is brilliant let me say something on the back this is to kind of epitomizes how cool this producer is das ergebnis ist ein herzhafer saftiger Feierabendwein, der riecht und schmeckt wie ein Spruchwoller Popmusik klingt. Which means, this is a wine that's hearty and succulent. It's a after work wine, which smells and tastes like pop music sounds. Don't take it too seriously. I think that's fucking brilliant. Okay, how much? It's a tenner. The Wine Society sells this for £10. Let, well, you, I think you get a shilling change. It's got this wonderful, earthy, slightly vegetal note, which I really, really like. It smells natural, but not in a bad way. It smells like it's got a herby, almost sort of skunky smell to it. The palate's round and generous. It's punchy. What's this wine made from? Zweigel and Blau Frankish mixed together. It's probably a field blend, which is how you get this overripe, unripe kind of tension in the wine. 
um, I've got pizza coming, and uh, I can't think of a single wine in the world that goes better with either Zweigelt or Pimp My Zweigelt, which is Hair Pit Nower. Thank you very much. If that hasn't excited you about Austrian wine, what, am I ha what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Stiegel. Thank you.